Yo, yo, YouTube. All right, we're back with our feisty and faithful 128 Neo board that we've added all kinds of stuff to. Um, we're going to focus here, obviously, today. Uh, I have removed everything, the, uh, the Lumafix junk and everything I had in there. Um, yeah, this stuff. God, what a mess. So, yeah, I pulled... This bad boy out of there that was feeding the modulator, and this was our modulator. And, you know, I, I was pretty happy with the setup. Um, it didn't look great in 64 mode, though. Um, I have ones that look better, you know, like the Evo. That thing looks awesome. Um, at any rate, I was hoping to get better 64 mode graphics out of this thing, better 40 column graphics in general. So I have acquired one of these things, and uh, somebody just did a video on one of these. I'll, I'll link him down below. Um, the hell's his name? I forgot. Captain Commodore. That's right. Uh, I've been watching stuff on his channel lately. He's a lot of fun, man. Go watch him. He's, he's really cool. So anyway, um, all that to say, he had some trouble getting this to fit with the Neo board in a D case. And I'm hoping I can overcome some of that. And I've I've fitted all kinds of different modulators on 128s and 64 short boards now. Um, things that were intended to be there, things that weren't supposed to be there, and everything in between. So I'm, I, I've gotten the knack of fitting stuff into the case. So anyway, enough intro shit. Um... Let's see, we'll angle this up some. So, obviously, I pulled out all the old stuff, so we're just down to the, the bare modulator section. And these are the super long 2.54, you know, uh, square pins, if you want to call them that. They're not those those cheap, crappy, you know, machine pins, which I guess have their place, but they're kind of weak. These things are pretty tough, right? So, I went and fitted all of these. They're all soldered on the bottom of the board already. Everything is attached underneath. And... Then there are these two holes there that are really just mount holes. They're bonded together electrically. They're probably bonded to ground, I would guess. Uh, but those two pins go to the same place, so we can bond them together by these two pins that are soldered to the same place underneath. Um, then obviously these are our signals and 5 volts and all that crap coming in. So we'll sneak the board away from the back of the case a little bit. And get all this lined up. And the, the trick with the short boards and the 128 is you, you got to have this thing on one hell of an angle to really get everything lined up. And it looks a little funky, but it works. So I'm just going to get it situated somewhat level, you know, as far as, you know, uh, you know even is concerned, but evenly slanted. I don't know how to really describe that, but... Um, And I think that's kind of the sweet spot. You just kind of wiggle it to where it wants to go. You know, don't don't tell it what to do. Let it tell you what it wants. You know, it's kind of like being married, I guess. Um, and you know, kind of kind of wiggle the board around to get it, get your holes lined up right. And it, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a couple of screws in the motherboard to hold it in place. And. It would help if I knew where they were. So I think we'll just kind of wiggle it into place. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go find some screws. So hang on one sec. All right. That was worth the trip. I actually found the screws that belong in this machine. So I've put in the back row of screws. And there goes my camera being stupid again. But... So I got the three screws across the back, and then I just put the one in the center on the other end. And let's, uh, it, it's just a matter of wiggling this thing into place where it feels like it's good and the plug goes in and out, and then we'll solder those pins on and call it good enough. All right, so I fiddled around with this thing for a minute or two, and it seems like the trick is this side here, you want to push down and, and really get it as far as it, wants to go as far as you make it go but get that in there good and snug and the other side just kind of pops into place after that so we'll plug our plug in the back so we know it gets in there we'll make sure he's evenly pushed down you know front to back on this side and 
That's that. I'm calling that good. I'm going to go ahead and tack these pins on and we'll call that bad boy installed. All right, a little bit of heat, a little bit of solder, and that's it. So, I mean, it was all a matter of 10 minutes of fiddling around to find that sweet spot. And really, at the end of the day, for this particular board in this particular case, I just pushed down like hell on that side, and this guy came up right where he needed to be. And he held, you know, because there was some torque on the pins by doing that, he held himself in place while I was soldering it. And this has no problem going in and out of there now. So that's pretty sweet. I was a little concerned about the placement on that, but this has to be at an extreme frickin' angle, right? Yeah, there's a good angle. You can see how much it's sitting on, but uh, that's what you gotta do to get these things in here. It's the same for the clear video. Uh, it's the same for the, uh, the retro channel modulator. Um, not to the same extreme on this guy, but it did have to be canted a good amount, so. Now that it's in there, we'll uh, figure out where the hell I put the rest of the parts and see if we need our cable stretcher for this thing because it seems like that's going to be a tight fit. So here is the VIC adapter, breakout board, whatever you want to call it. And does this thing say pin one on it anywhere? Not particularly, but it has that notch facing that way. I gotta go see if I can find the manual on this thing. I don't want to plug it in backwards. I think it's gotta go that way. That would be opposite of the notch, so I don't know. Let me see if I can find the manual on this thing. All right, so after Googling around a little bit, it looks like this is the correct orientation for it. And if it was the other way around, there's no way the cable would reach anyway. So it could really only go one way. They could have thrown in some directions, but whatever, we'll figure it out. That's why we're DIYers. So anyway, it's in there. It does stick up a bit back here, but I think the case will clear it, I hope. Uh, but having it on an angle like that is the only way to get the, the you know, barrel jack here to actually line up. So I think I'll, I'll slap the Vic back in this thing, turn it on and see if it explodes. All right, so the Vic's back in place and yeah, fire in the hole. Oh yeah, the S video is completely terrible coming out of this thing. Um, worst one I've seen yet on this motherboard, but I didn't buy this for the S video. Um, let's, uh, I'm gonna flip the switch and see if it does anything. Nah, that's just for component on and off or something, I think. There again, manual would have been nice. Um, but uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me rig up this thing to something with component input and see how that looks. All right, so I just spent like two hours screwing with an old capture card, so I gave up. I hate capture cards, especially old ones. Anyway, this is a camera pointed at a TV, obviously. So with it being in focus, you see the the actual pattern of the LCD itself, the moiré kind of thing. So um, I'm going to take it out of focus a little bit. And that'll kind of smooth everything to get rid of that pattern. So here, let's go manual and... Yeah, so, I mean, that kind of blurs the text a little bit, but the uh, the output on this thing is phenomenal. I'm really impressed with it. If you notice, the color's a bit off, and that's part of the palette that's loaded into it. It's just oversaturated. It, makes games look a lot better actually but uh here we'll go back to 128 mode so you see it's more saturated than you're probably used to seeing but uh if we fire up this happy little program we can change all those things oh wait i screwed that up hang on i'm supposed to toggle a switch all right, so you fire up this program, you toggle the output mode selector. And that puts it into program mode. And then, you know, we're using the firmware default palette right now, so we can go to the Colador palette. And we're gonna do new Lumas. And we'll just leave everything default. 
and flash. All right, we'll reboot the thing. And that's that more uh, minty green instead of yellow that you're used to seeing. And then 64 mode, the colors are bang on in here too. And I, I wish I had a real capture device because videotaping this you know, screen for the output is you know, really doing it no justice. It looks absolutely awesome. There's not a hint of jail bar anywhere. It's, uh, it's as clean as they come. So, uh, yeah, you know, the uh, other, you know, annoyances aside that I've run into, which we'll get into here in a few minutes, you know, putting that aside, uh, all in all, I like it. I just got to figure out how to fix a few problems. All right, so here's the final piece of the puzzle to make this thing actually fit in here in the case close. There was, where's the camera? There was this little strain relief guy, and this cable was wrapped over the top, right? So by popping this off, getting rid of the strain relief, you get a little more slack in the thing. There's no strain relief, but all this stuff is attached in here, so I don't think that's a big deal at all. So rip this bad boy off, throw it away, you get your slack back, you get the clearance back, and it's pretty much right. I mean, it's maybe... A millimeter and a half two mils above the top of the case if that and there's a little bit of a gap in the top half of the shell so when you put it on there it's got no problem clearing that so this thing's in there it's solid the thing lines up you just got to put it at a, a pretty steep angle particularly on the neo board so anyway that's that for fitting it um, I'm gonna I'm gonna boot this thing back up and talk about a couple of the problems I ran into all right, so herein lies the problem. Uh, we have Super Mario that takes advantage of turbo mode on the 128, which I think is a huge feature of the 128, being able to run in 2 megahertz mode. Even in 64 mode in the you know bad lines area, you get a little bit of acceleration out of it. Except the video freaks out when it goes into 2 megahertz mode. So if you notice that uh, that's not just an artifact of the TV or the video or something, the background is flickering. It's almost like the blue voltage isn't right. I don't know. And a whole bunch of colors just aren't there. And the more it goes on, the worse it looks, it seems. Uh, especially World 1-2, where everything's like dark and blue and everything. It's just pretty much black as night in there. So here we'll... Uh, I'm no speedrunner, but let's see if we can not die <laughs> and uh, get to World 1-2 here real quick. So you can't even see the blocks there. And you know what? That's good enough because, you know, World 1-2 looks just like, you know, the uh, in the tube there in that coin room, so... But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not quite right. So we'll reboot them. There, let's just power cycle them. Get the game to run again. And if we disable turbo, start game. Looks perfect. Looks better than perfect. Looks. Awesome. You know, I love the output on this thing, but you, you lose a, a massive feature of the 128 by not being able to use turbo mode. There is a firmware update that, um, I don't know the guy's actual name, but Copper Dragon, whatever his name is, <laughs> great guy, develops cool stuff. You know, all these projects and whatever, friggin' awesome that he does. Um, but there's no way to actually update this thing without getting an FPGA programmer. And I don't have one kind of don't want to have to buy another piece of hardware to run a software update, you know, and so that's that's the downside here is that this thing, it's not really a commercial product, it's more of a dev kit. Um, I don't know, I have mixed emotions on it. You know, I don't, I don't mind doing dev kit kind of things and whatever else, but I don't know how much FPGA programmers cost. 
Um, I've read about you know the cheap knockoffs on AliExpress cooking people's FPGAs on them, and I don't want to blow this thing up with some cheap ass programmer. Um, I'm almost half tempted to build my own out of an Arduino because at least I'll know exactly what the pins are doing and when, and hopefully not blow anything up. Uh, probably with an Arduino, you'd have to use level shifters. Um, so maybe a Pico is a better choice, or uh, maybe even the well, there's the the 3.3 volt Arduinos. Maybe it's one of those. You know, I, I don't know. I got to figure out how to flash this thing now, and that just kind of bothers me for. You know, something that you're, you know, buying as a product versus something that you would be screwing around with developing, right? So, I don't know. I, I guess I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. But uh, I, I sent a message off to the guys at VGP. They wrote back to me, so I'll probably go back and forth with them a little bit. Hopefully, I can get a little bit of a, a inclination on what it takes to, to get these things flashed. But. Um, yeah, I I just don't know. I don't know anything about the topic. So hopefully I will learn something in the process. But, you know, be warned, there's a batch of these out there with old firmware and you got to be prepared to update them. Uh, it took me a while of digging too. Like, the you know, this thing didn't come with any docs at all. There's some docs posted on the VGP site or you can go to the forums or you can go to Copper Dragon's GitHub or there's stuff on like, you know, Form 64, Lemon 64, you know, other form sites. So, I mean, there's data out there, but... You have to go scrape it up from all the different sources and you know for for something that you're buying as a commercial product uh i don't know i would have liked it to been a little more polished so you know if i knew i was buying a dev kit that's another story but it's what it is we'll figure it out um so i think that's my rant um that'll probably wrap this up you know the video output on this thing is freaking phenomenal so it's, it's worth the effort to put it in there to you know get what i would call uh you know respectable better than a respectable 40 column video out of this machine because you know we all know the commodore implementation was a, a bit lacking in that department so anyway that's that i'll let you go um i do recommend it if you're willing to put in the effort but if you just want like a turnkey solution that you know is going to be fully compatible and work i don't know that it's there yet i might wait a little while and you know if i were you and you didn't want to screw around with flashing fpgas you know maybe you wait it out a little bit until you know cards come with a you know, later version of, of code on and that runs a little better. So anyway, that's that. I'll end it here. Have fun, kids. Go solder things. It's good for the soul.